Hey everybody, Steve Schnee here uh, for this very special episode of Ronnie Barnett's Boom Boom Room. This is the 3D episode, that's right. This episode is going to be in 3D, so I hope that you have your 3D glasses handy because this is going to be a fun one. The 3D effects in this episode are so real that you're actually going to feel that you can reach out and touch all the items that Ronnie Barnett shows us. So remember to grab your 3D glasses, sit back, and I'll tell you on the screen when to put the 3D glasses on. And I'll be putting them on with you. In fact, I'm going to put them on right now. So enjoy this special 3D episode of Ronnie Barnett's Boom Boom Room coming at you now. Whoa, <laughs> that, that looked like it was coming at me. Hey, I'm Ronnie Barnett. And I'm Steve Schnee. And welcome to Ronnie Barnett's Boom Boom Room. He's lean and linky and he knows how to zoom. Check out Ronnie Barnett's Boom Boom Room. Season two. These are sheriff badges. Um, put them on, put them on. That's the right way. Okay. That's an outlaws. Wow. Ooh. Outlaws sheriff. Bad. Let me hold it from behind. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I got a soft spot for a lot of rock, but I got a soft spot for Southern rock. A lot of bands. Oh, and out, to be honest, outlaws are not the best of the bunch, but they, they're okay. They're yeah. okay. So there's the outlaw sheriff badge. Um, Didn't Henry Paul come from the outlaws? Yes. He, Henry Paul. He had solo stuff as well. He did. He he, uh, yeah. he came from the Outlaws and uh, Henry Paul band had a yeah a pretty pretty high profile solo mm -hmm. career on Atlantic uh, mm -hmm. for at least two or three records. Uh, yeah, actually, I think there's four. I think I think uh, I, I don't know if it's Wounded Bird. One of the labels did a two CD version with all four Henry Paul records. Uh, okay, okay, just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, but here's the. Uh, I know these are hard to see. There we go. The Long Riders. Wow. That looks Sheriff's totally badge. fake. Sid Griffin and the boys. Yep. Uh, Tom Stevens has become one of my best friends. I should ask him what really? era this is from. Yeah. Um, I'm going to guess it's got to be from the first um, Island record because that's when they got their biggest push. And, and Yeah. You know, looking for Lewis and Clark that was on like every format in England. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It was a 10 inch, mm -hmm. a double seven inch. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the one that got the push. And sadly, by the next album on Island, uh, they, they were kicking them out the door. But uh, yeah, Long Rider Sheriff badge. And uh, this doesn't really fit, though it does in a way, I guess, artist wise. Here's a deck of outlaws playing to win playing cards. No, oh, that's that's awesome. So mm -hmm. <laughs> they're sealed in there. But uh, and of course, more cool marketing. Marco cool Marketing. I mean, uh, if you remember that cover, it's got like a guy with a mask, you know, uh, I don't know, shuffling cards. Yeah. Playing to win is where the outlaws kind of got, kind of got a little bad. Uh, <laughs> we could, we could say that now, but, uh, yeah. I don't think Henry right, Paul's man. listening. No, no, Henry Paul. Look, Henry Paul, he, he probably, he probably would admit the same, but he left the band shortly thereafter. So, okay. Um, all right, and the last, uh, the clusters will be a, a recurring theme here uh, if the Boom Boom Room gets us season three, but, uh, or four, or, um, which means, is, does Steve want to do it or not? That's what that means. Um, no, it really means if Ronnie wants to do it. I sit here and I, <laughs> and I keep, you know, every time a text comes up on my phone, I go, please let it be Ronnie. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just <Wow>. my friends. <laughs> we were on the same. We're on the same wavelength about this because I was yeah. anyway. Okay, my last uh, format cluster, if you will, notepads, promotional notepads. Oh, awesome! So I'm going to start here with a band that's that's. I love this band, and I think you probably do too. But they are destined to be forgotten, and, and they just are, because um, time just has not been that great to them. But this is a notepad uh, while you're out. Uh, notepad for the call. The band The Call. Awesome. I love The Call. And that's Mercury, so that would have been the best era of the band, in my opinion. Uh, those first three albums have not been released on CD, and those yes. are their three best. Uh, Michael Bean continued to be a great songwriter. Even uh, some of his solo album, when it wasn't so bluesy, he had yeah. some great stuff. Right up uh, 
you know, uh, just a great band from beginning to end. Totally agree. And, and they had, you know, they had a couple of hits. They had a, they had a presence on MTV and, uh, and, uh, uh, the walls came down was huge. Yeah. Um, there's a catalog number on here, so we could tie it into which record it actually was. 4037 for those at home wondering. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to guess it was for the second record. I, I was going to, I'm going to guess it's for Modern Romans. I don't know why. I could have been for the think, first record. Yeah. I'm thinking, uh, okay, here, here's my thinking here. I'm thinking that would be the first album because I, my memory, my memory may not be so good, but I think the first album might be self titled because the second yeah, album is. was Modern Romans. And the yeah. third album was Seen Beyond Dreams. That yes. does not tie into anything. So more than likely, that just ties into the first album, which is just called The Call. You're probably right. I, I'm just thinking Modern Romans because, like, that was when Walls came down and it got a big push and stuff. But I didn't learn until later that Michael Bean had, like, roots in the, in the contemporary Christian scene. Yeah. And, and oh, The yeah. Call are basically a commercial Christian kind of band, if you will. Their I don't know last... that every song, I don't know that every song is Christian themed, but a lot of them are. Their last album uh, actually was, I believe, released to the Christian market. Uh, it wasn't a commercially released album, uh, and it was it was great. It was a great album. I think Soaring Bird might have been on that album. It's just stellar. I mean, Michael Bean was just a great emotional songwriter. A lot of depth to his songs. Absolutely. So and the band, so great. the band were great. Every one of the Un band was great. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. No, I love them. Uh, like I say, though, I, I, I fear they are, they are destined to be forgotten. Notepads. This is the material issue. Wow. Uh, it says Kim is coming. Uh, they had a song called Kim the Waitress. Uh-huh. So these oh, are like, wow. Yeah, it's a pad of like, yeah. you know, restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like a receipt. A receipt pad. Like receipts. It's a receipt book. Uh, and if you can see there, it says material issue, Freak City soundtrack at the bottom there. Again on Mercury Records. Uh, yeah. So they did custom make these pages. So yeah. Uh, place your order now. It says so. Uh, <laughs> March 1994. It's dated on the front, but a uh, low material issue. Kim the waitress is a great song, even though they didn't write it. Um, great song though. I mean, uh, all three of the material issue records that came out and while they were active are, are unbelievable. And so is the one that came out after that they were working on after. Uh, Jim Allison yeah. uh, passed away. Okay, uh, no, no, there's no tie-in here. I think they just made no patch for this, but this is the uh, the television, the third television album, the the reunion uh -huh. one, if you will, on Capitol mm -hmm. from 1990, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was. Uh, again, just a notepad with the graphics, but. You know, I think I might have used to have that. Yeah, you probably did. You probably, you were in the business then. Yeah. You probably had that, it. You used them. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I don't know when I haven't been in the business. It's, I've been in the business since I started at Abbey Road Distributors in like 1988 or whatever, and I've worked retail or wholesale ever since in the music yeah. business. You're a and lifer. I, and I've kept absolutely nothing. Um. All right, I got one final notepad here. Okay. Uh, and I'm. I can't wait to get your thoughts on this band, Steve. Okay. Because I can't talk about this band with, with anybody. Sue Sad and the Next. Oh, my God. Planet Records. Now, uh, you know, I used to have that on vinyl. I think we may have transferred that for our MFV. Uh, I, I have to look. Uh, but I literally have not heard that uh, album in years. Now, here's here's a crazy, stupid thing. Well, there's many stupid things about me, but I had two things. Is 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 uh, back in the new wave days, I never paid attention to any band where anybody had a mustache. Okay, yeah. Because if they had short hair, mustache, whatever, I automatically thought of like Kansas during the new wave era. Well, they all had short hair and they wore day glow outfits and uh, <laughs> high tops, but they had mustaches, right? You know, it's yeah. just like, you know, there's somebody says, you know, you got to change your image. And, you know, imagine, you know, Sue Sad the next, you know, they bring in this guy's got long hair and it's like, look, you got to cut your hair and you got to shave off your mustache. And the guy's just going like, I cut my hair, but the mustache is staying. You know, exactly. And, and yeah. usually the guy with the mustache is the most talented guy in the band because it's like, all right, 
all right, okay, you can have the mustache because you're a great guitar player, a great keyboard, or you write the, the song. keyboard. It, it's probably the keyboardist or songwriter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they they let him slide. They he's like cuts his hair, but he, you know, put put him in the sleeveless shirt or whatever. Yep, yep, the sleeveless <laughs> striped shirt. Yes, yes, yes. The, the yeah. red pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you're right. You're right. There, there, there would often be one guy that just wasn't gonna let go of the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and you knew that that means about six months before that si they signed that deal, they were uh, uh, in some bar playing Freebird. <laughs> no, yeah. and Sue. Yeah, I mean Sue sat the next. Yeah, obviously those guys. Yeah, obviously they've yeah. been around. Um, yeah. But I like that record. Um, and. Uh, but that's uh, that's one of those records that was like it's been in the dollar bin ever since it came out. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, a lot of promos around, and you know, every copy is a promo. Like you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good luck finding a clean copy of that record. Um, you know, they're all promos. It was well, you know, they pushed it. Um, I got a bunch of old LA weeklies, and I'll see Sue Sad in the next. You know, they knocked around oh, town. Really? Um, yeah, they they did your Madame Wong's and stuff. They were on that circuit, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, where where are you now, Sue Sad? And uh, this is one final tie in there. This is a Sue Sad the next pencil. Okay, I can see it there. Uh, what is it for? It just says cool. Sue Sad the next. So it's kind of like the companion piece to that notepad. Exactly. God, I'm sorry it's not showing up, but I people can see can... Sue. I can see yeah. Sue. It's just block so, letters. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, oh, okay. Hold it right there. There you go. Okay. Okay, keep going yes. to your to your right. A little more. There you go. Sue Sad. Ah, next. that's what. Okay, okay. It's hard to tell on the Zoom. There yeah, we go. I know. Sue Sad in the next. And uh, it's unsharpened. It's never been used. And that's it for this episode of Ronnie Barnett's Boom Boom Room. I'd like to extend my personal thanks to Ronnie for allowing us to enter his room. Hey, thank you, Steve, for doing this. You do all the heavy lifting on this, if, if no one can tell. Anyway, that's it. We'll see y'all next week. <laughs> He's lean and linky and he knows how to zoom. Check out Ronnie Barnett's Boom Boom Room. The effects were okay on that.